everyone. Um, welcome back to District 50's Facebook Live event uh, in our regular series. Uh, uh, this uh, episode is with uh, Nara Mahon, and Nara has one of the longest titles in the district <laughs> because uh, she's so talented, we just gave her a lot to do. She is the assistant uh, principal at Jefferson School, but she also in uh, the other half of her time is the district behavioral specialist, and that um, is a lot to do for one person, absolutely. right, Nara? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Good. Well, um, we want to ask uh, Nara and get to know her a little bit better, and um, just a quick story about Nara. Um, she doesn't even know this, I don't think. When we interviewed her, um, uh, the interview, I wanted to stop in like two minutes because I'd seen enough. <laughs> I knew that I wanted to hire her. All the rest of the questions didn't matter. She's uh, been just a, a bundle of energy and optimism and great uh, asset to our district. So, Nara, why don't you just uh, introduce yourself to all of us. Um, yes. Some people might know you as the friendly face outside Jefferson, making yes. sure traffic goes well. That's right. Um, but you're probably all bundled up, and they might not recognize you yes, uh, I, now. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you so much, Dr. Tafoya, for the wonderful welcome. Uh, thank you for joining in and listening. Uh, I just would like to just give you a little bit about who I am personally and professionally. So, um, well, I work again at Jefferson Elementary, part-time um, assistant principal, as well as the district behavioral specialist going into all the schools. And I've met quite a few of you, and I'm looking forward to meeting more of the, the staff as well as the students. I have 18 years of uh, education experience. I started off working as a paraprofessional uh, at the, in the west uh, suburbs of Chicago, and I started there at a high school. I did that in an EDBD classroom, and that was a, a challenge because working there, I had to work with students with, uh, they were at-risk students living uh, with different factors that affected them, such as poverty and um, different life experiences that made it very hard for them. And learning through that experience, that's really what motivated me to go back to school and work on my special education degree. I earned a master's uh, and continued to work as a teacher in that same district as a teacher for those same students uh, a few years later. So fast forward, I did 13 years in, uh, in the inner city of Chicago in a K-8 to building, mm -hmm. uh, working with um, students in a resource classroom, um, across CAD classroom, and co-teaching. So I have extensive ex um, experience in that inner city of K-8 to building, uh, co-teaching styles, working with staff members, right. doing different um, collaboration types of models and PLC models. Uh, we con I continued my education and earned a uh, second master's degree in administration and worked on, um, moved on in CPS, I'm sorry, the uh, same district I was working at at a different school as an assistant principal. Uh, and I really just fell in love with education and fell in love with the students, the population that I was working with, making sure that they had a voice and making sure that I was an advocate for them because a lot of the challenges that they faced, I realized that they needed somebody to uh, really inspire them and show them a vision. And so they're so not that, stuck in those same mindsets. Yeah, and that's one of the things I remember from your interview, just the stories of some of those individual kids yeah. that you know you had such an impact on. Yeah. Um, speaking of kids, mm -hmm. um, there are uh, five very special faces yes. I know waiting for you to get home tonight. Tell Absolutely. us a little bit about uh, your family. Yeah, so my family, uh, I have five girls, uh, ages one. Actually, she'll be one tomorrow my baby, and then the oldest is five years old. I'm married. Um, we actually just had an anniversary this past weekend, so uh, we're not too far from the area. We're nearby Harvard, and we're just really thrilled to be uh, part of the Harvard community and learning more about uh, what Harvard has to offer. My kids actually asked me about Milk Days, oh, and so that's a big event that we're man. waiting to uh, attend for the parade. The best parade in yeah. the area. Oh my gosh, the parade is phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, so definitely come and be a part of that. We're it's excited. A, it's good times for all. So just let's talk about mm -hmm. your um, transition. I mean, Chicago Public Schools mm -hmm. and Harvard um, may be similar in some ways, may be different in some ways. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about what you've learned about Harvard and kind of where predominantly your work um, is yes. this year? So uh, right now, one of the big uh, initiatives is really getting more professional development training for staff 
on restorative practices and trauma-informed care, making sure that uh, our staff members are able to look at the whole child, uh, the academic and the social-emotional side. And so we have a committee, uh, it's called the Trauma-Informed Restorative Practice Committee, and, and thanks to you, Dr. Tafoya, and the district leadership team, as well as the board members for allowing the Power Six teams, there's six teams, and I'm a co-chair of one of the teams that I just mentioned, uh, and really just investigating and doing a lot of research on best practices to bring back to the staff and support our students. And that's really looking at the whole child, making sure children are supported um, from the external factors that are affected to the, with them at home, that they bring and carry to the school, and we're supporting them social emotionally as well as um, our our support with academics here. So if my mom is watching, and she <laughs> may be, uh, explain to her in very layman's terms, because um, mm -hmm. in school there was a big thing for a while there, like um, we're gonna have zero tolerance on all this stuff. You right. just, if you did it, you're out. Right. Um, but now we're talking about restorative practices. For the outside education person, mm -hmm. help us understand the difference between those two schools of thought because mm -hmm. they are very different. They right. are very different. Absolutely. So uh, in the past with the zero tolerance policy, that was before 2015, before uh, the Senate Bill 100 came, uh, there was a zero tolerance. So if a student smoked a cigarette or if a student uh, misbehaved and was fighting, they would get expelled or they would get some type of uh, long-term suspension. So students were kept out of school, they weren't uh, in school where they should be learning, and they weren't taught the skills that they needed to know to make better choices. And so the law in 20, 2015 stated that, okay, we need to look at alternative practices. We need to see how we can support students and give them alternative avenues. For example, if they're smoking in school, can we uh, look at a different model such as maybe one example could be having the students write a report or do some type of uh, presentation to the entire staff or to the entire to their peers on how the effects of how smoking harms uh, people um, so really just giving them alternative avenues and keeping the child in school and not the pathway to prison so is it essentially the root looking for actually what's the root cause of that and examining yes. that rather than just dishing out a punishment and then really it may happen again because right. there's really nothing that's been addressed in terms of the root behaviors that right. may have caused that. Absolutely. That the root causes of what um, happens in every in any child, it doesn't have to be an at-risk child, but any child that's affected by some type of, it could be trauma, it could be sure. neglect. There's a um, lot going on Lots in of kids different lives, factors. Right. Yeah. Well, that's one of the reasons why uh, you were hired is, mm -hmm. is in my conversations with staff members around the district, one of the things I heard repeatedly is, we've got behaviors that we're just not used to. We don't mm -hmm. really know how to deal with that. Can you help us somehow? And sure. so we didn't really have a very good answer to that. And so that's what uh, NARA's been wonderful about is helping provide us some answers. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things? Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that smoking's now totally okay and fighting's Absolutely okay. Because I think that's another misconception right. that, well, if, what does that mean? Anything goes and we can just mm -hmm. be crazy. Yeah. Um, so help people that might mm -hmm get accidentally lost down that rabbit hole to, to come up for air. Sure. So, so we're teaching students to make better decisions and we have to provide those opportunities for students to make better choices. So you have students that will, and even as adults, we make mistakes, but what are the strategies that we're providing to help that student learn? And are there consequences? Absolutely. Are there still um, ways that we, so we're not punishing a student, but we're teaching them different, giving them the tools they need to make better decisions. Mm -hmm. And through that, uh, through these different ways of, of different approaches, really, we're making sure that the students are informed and if they're able to express their own decision making in a way that expresses that they've learned from it, I think it's a good way then you know you've done your job if they can teach or tell another student, their peers or their their teachers that okay, this is right. the proper way to so behave. In that sense, you know, we talk, and you're probably the mm -hmm. district's um, foremost expert in trauma informed care. Mm -hmm. What are these traumas? Um, because I think if if you're again. Um, outside the district and not with kids sure. every day, you kind of go back to what are your experiences. And so trauma now may be trauma different than what trauma looked like. Mm -hmm. um, when you think of trauma um, 30 years ago, it may not be that. And you don't think really of children that kids. But mm -hmm. what are some of the traumas that kids are experiencing? And then what 
what what does that hap mean to them in the classroom? Why sure. is it relevant for us in education to be talking about? Isn't that like the parents' job, some might say. Mm -hmm. Well, in the past, I know when I was in school, it was you had your rows and you had to focus on what the teacher was telling you and you do your work. And so uh, the external factors that affected any child in that classroom maybe wasn't looked at or even uh, investigated to find out how can I support that child more. So today looking at a trauma-informed lens is really looking at the whole child, looking at all the different components that make up that person. So what that could be built just greeting that child as soon as they walk into that door. And I look at every child that walks into Jefferson or in any building as my own child. We have to address the whole child, that so social emotional aspect. They may, may be coming from homes from neglect, abuse, mm -hmm. uh, even in the former districts where students were constantly bombarded with drugs and uh, really gang infested act, um, environments those children they want it they want it support they want it to build relationships and that school the schools that we're teaching in and we're supporting children in that's their second home and we need to make sure that we're giving them the support and really the love that they need uh, if they're not getting it at home they're getting that support right. here at school so earlier you mentioned um, the power six committees and mm -hmm. we'll soon enough be sharing with our community what those power six committees are mm -hmm. but why well, maybe give a little preview of what is, um, your power six committee that you're working on mm -hmm. um, is thinking about doing and what will be the benefits not only to the staff who you mm -hmm. know get trained and things but what's going to be the change for students how can we know um, circumstances in sure. the day-to-day -day experience of a kid in Harvard District 50 is going to be better because right. of the work of this committee well one of the strengths that I've noticed that Harvard the st all the students they are motivated they enjoy coming to school they you look into their eyes and you really see that yeah. they're looking for the love and support and, and they're asking questions they're inquisitive they're curious they're they want to know what we have to offer they're asking questions about their you know how is your day and what what are you doing and so they're really interested in in me and the, in the staff and uh, people that interact with those students every day. It's a very close-knit com community, which I love. And, you know, looking as far as developing where we are with that relationship building, I think we're in a really good place. I think there's also room to grow and through that collaboration with the parents at home. And, you know, I invite you to come to Jefferson. I would love to get to know the parents more. And I think that's an area that I would love to see grow as a whole district, just making sure we get more parent involvement in our schools, making sure that we can yeah. share strategies here um, right. that the stu teachers have academically and social emotionally. Okay, we're on to the rapid fire question mm -hmm. section of this, okay. which are totally uh, unscripted. <laughs> okay. Right? Um, cubs or socks? Cubs. Cubs. All right. <laughs> Good. Um, favorite type of taco? Uh, I love steak tacos with lots of jalapenos. Oh. And my secretary knows because she's always getting extra, <laughs> extra hot spicy for me. Oh, good. All right. Girl after my own heart. Um, favorite vacation destination? Uh, I've never been, but I would love to go to Hawaii. Oh, yeah. That, mm -hmm. that sounds perfect, especially this time. Although <laughs> yes. it's beautiful outside today, so it maybe is. Hawaii's coming to us. Yeah. Um, you grew up in Montana. Favorite yes. childhood memory of Montana? Uh, going to the mountains. Uh, my mother is from a small, tiny town called Belt, Montana. There's a, There were 800 people at the time, small knit community, and the mountains surrounded her town. That's why it was called Belt. And so just going up into the mountains with with the family was a very special memory. Well, I always try. I'm from Wyoming, so I always trust mm -hmm. uh, people from the West a little bit more. There, <laughs> yeah. they have to, you know, be independent, uh, but yes. yet rely on people only when they really need it. So yeah, that that's sense right. of independent spirit Absolutely. is something I'm good. Um, right. Finally, favorite experience you've had thus far in Harvard? Uh, really, just getting to know the community and the staff. Uh, it's very uh, supportive and collaborative. I sense that in all the school buildings, everybody's willing to extend their hand and help and really learn from each other and grow. I, I, I think that's a strength that we have as a community, uh, and I'm so happy to be a part of it. So thank you. Good. Well, thanks, Nara, for joining us. You can see now why uh, we were just so taken <laughs> by her at the interview, uh, her background, her talent, and uh, above all, uh, her passion for the children of this district is really what uh, inspired us to make the hire. And do appreciate the board um, yes. 
agreeing to this because oh, it was something that I had to uh, explain why I thought it was necessary. And I think uh, we're seeing the benefits of that and will for years to come. So thanks, Nara, for Thank uh, joining you. us on our little Facebook Live. Thanks, Thank everyone, you. for listening. And if you ever have any questions for uh, either myself or for Nara about anything uh, in this area, feel free to reach out to us. We love that interaction with our parents and our community. And uh, thanks again for joining us today. Thank you.